So in order to show you how to use the regression uh, tab <clears throat> in HyperTools, I have here a simulation and I will show you first in, in exploration what is the simulation about. So we have we have this hyperspectral image with different circles, okay? And every circle contains the concentration of one analyte here, okay? These are the spectra. If we just take this pixel, we can see that this is the spectrum in here. And also in here is basically the same spectrum with a little bit different noise, okay? And different concentrations. So our target is to quantify whatever it is in the of this analyte in these circles okay so in every like in a classification and regression we also have the step of calibration and training and then the step of external prediction and for doing that we count with this matrix x ref basically here. these are my spectra that i will use for developing the calibration model and y ref that is just values of concentration that goes from 5 to 15. Okay, remember that this is just a simulation for showing you. So the first thing I have to do is to open HyperTools. Then I can do one thing. I can check in exploration. I can check which is the preprocessing that is going to, is going to be better for my image. Okay, and assuming that uh, we know it, load X matrix and it's my reference matrix. Then Y vector, Y ref, and the wavelength vector. If you need, as you can see, it's very similar to the classification tab. The only difference is that we don't have the possibility of extracting from a standard image that we have in our workspace. Because in here we only use X matrices and that's normally fine. And then we have the same ability of making spectral cropping or pre-processing. In this case, let's apply a little bit of a smoothing and SMB. Okay, in this case, there is not much change. Okay, it's just a simple simulation. And in calibrate, I press calibrate. Okay, I have three possibilities PLS, PCR, MLR. Okay, let's do it on just a PLS model. So as you can see, the settings are very similar to the ones before in classification, centering, and three latent variables. So, sorry, three three sets for uh, cross validation. <laughs> the latent variables we can choose in here. Well, I think with two we have more than enough. Okay, okay. and we can just see. That of course it is a simulation, so more or less the things are going fine in here. So this is my model. I can save it in my workspace. Okay, and I can close this window here. And then in prediction, the only thing we need to do is to load the image X. The mask, in this case, we don't have a mask, and the wavelengths, we have the wavelengths. And we just load the model that we just made. PLS model and predict. Okay, there you are. So what we have here is the real concentration or the obtained concentration for every single circle in here, every single area. Okay. One thing that I want to highlight is that first of all, the calibration range goes between five and 15 and we obtain higher concentrations here and lower concentrations in here. And that's perfectly normal, that's perfectly fine, okay? Just because I, what I do in a, my calibration set is to take the average of some pixels. So probably some of those pixels will have more or less uh, concentration than the one assigned in the, in the calibration. So as you can see in here, the place or the colors that go in the calibration range are actually from 5 to 15, and that's more than more than perfect. So let's see what is the error we are committing, because this is a simulation. So I also have a real concentrations of these circles in this in this image. First, I will save the prediction. Okay. And now I can go, okay, I can say 
behavior and intelligence plot. This is the, these are the real concentrations, okay? And now I can say model, let's predict dot concentration image, like that. And okay, sorry, this one, perfect. Here we are. So as you can see, it's not that bad. Actually, there are some only some pixels. Oh, that one is pretty pretty fine. I have also pixels that go to 20. Look at this. That's beautiful because the calibration range only covers from 5 to 15. I still, as long as it's linear, okay, it's not very advisable to extrapolate. I still can do nice uh, nice results in here outside the 15 in concentration. Okay, the same in here, it's probably all the background. Okay, so that's pretty cool actually. Let's see, as for the shake of, uh, of knowledge, what is the correlation between these two? Oops. Yeah, here we are, sorry. <laughs> so, there we are, we have 99. 99% of correlation between the real and the predicted concentrations. And that is pretty cool, actually. So now, if you want to change anything in here, you can do it. That is, imagine that uh, oh, you are not convinced of this preprocessing. So first of all, what you can do is to come back to exploration and in here, in the original image, uh, maybe first derivative is going to work better. So you could try what happens here in first derivative with the exploration image. And then in regression, you load again the X matrix, the Y vector, the wavelengths, and then you perform first derivative. Then if you want to try instead of saying here we have a PLS, if you want to try, for instance, MLR, you can do it, okay? Easy. As you can see, it's very easy to go back and forward in the in the app in the in the, in the software. So that that's a very nice uh, and versatile uh, for regression and for classification. 